everybody. It's Chris from Rottweiler Performance and we had a really unique opportunity today to show you guys exactly how we create a lot of the bespoke parts that we do here at Rottweiler Performance. We have a lot of people that message us on Instagram, uh, a lot of young designers, engineers that are going through school and they ask us exactly how we go about our engineering process and we had a really cool opportunity to show you on this brand new uh, 2022 KTM 1290 Adventure exactly how we do that when it comes to 3D scanning. So I want you to follow us. We're going to come meet Craig here. He's going to show us exactly uh, what processes we use uh, to do that. So this is Craig Hall here and we tap Craig to uh, come in here and help us get our scans done uh, so we can build those point clouds and uh, start designing products. So uh, Craig, why don't you help explain exactly what this is and how we use it. So this is a Creoform, correct? This is a Creoform. It's a Spark white light scanner. And uh, we have, um, see on the screen what we've started with uh, getting some surfaces on, on the bike here. And we have uh, targets already that were on the bike to help with the uh, stitching of, uh, of the scans. So we have these, see. there's these little stickers that you can see inside this this uh, point cloud here, and they help uh, figure out exactly where the surfaces are in relation to it. So when you bring it, bring the scanner back and forward and around, it takes those dots and keeps track of them and helps us figure out exactly where the surfaces are. Yeah, so what we have is, you said point cloud, so mm. this is the point cloud where it's little tiny dots in space, and those three dots create the, the triangles, and all those triangles together create our, uh, our smooth mesh. And you said it's... You can even see all the stitching right here. I mean, it's so accurate. Accurate down to, you know, about 10 thou resolution mm -hmm. that you can pick up all the stitching and... And so um, this, this is a point cloud here, which is essentially, it's not a solid. It's just, it's just correct. an entity. It's just a cloud sitting there that, that we can then turn into a solid that yeah. we can then manipulate parts from. Yeah, we'll, we'll take... Uh, the, the point cloud in those triangles and create a, you know, we're working with this area, so we'll tell it to create just a surface of, of that specific area mm -hmm. that we could later take into CAD, trim that, and, and add, um, whether it's a, if it's a sheet metal part or like a mm -hmm. billet part, you could add your features then, but this is just, like I said, it's a, it's kind of a dumb surface right now mm -hmm. that we have to uh, export out of here as, as a mesh and then uh, as a surface, and then turn that, turn that into uh, CAD surfaces that can be you know, machined or mm -hmm. cut out on any kind of machine. So this is basically a piece of software right here that is able to take those point clouds and you can, you can look at areas and try to, and it'll ask you questions and you can kind of answer those questions and say, is, is this designed to be flat? Is it supposed to be curved? What is this radius? And it will start to kind of you can start to create a solid out of that. And the point of that is so you can actually snap and attach things and, and really know where surfaces are. Because right now you really can't snap anything to this. It's just this yeah. blob. E even if it yeah. was a, like a, a perfect square that you had machined and you scanned it, you still have to tell the computer, it's like, yes, this is a solid surface. This is where the corner it's, is. It's yeah. dead flat and the, you know, the edges are perpendicular or mm -hmm. if it had a perfect hole, it's like, Yes, that is a, a half inch round hole. And mm -hmm. so the, the scanning doesn't do, it, it's not a, a two click magic and you can design parts. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, 30% of the time is scanning and then there's the editing before you even get to your CAD design of mm -hmm. your product or whatever the part is. So you may scan, say, a plastic part that is designed to be parallel. The sides are designed to be parallel, but because of the molding, they've, they've cooled and become unparallel. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you actually design it parallel so it you, you can answer questions like it might say hey are these designed to be parallel or not so things like that yeah there's definitely a lot of thought and and what that purpose of that part is like you know plastic parts are you know notoriously warped or you know mm -hmm. they just they're not exact yeah so you have to know what what they're bolting to or a reference part to know how to create a part from that or mm -hmm. your part does it mate to that plastic or is the plastic just background part and you need clearance from it Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you definitely need to know the intent of the part and, uh, you know, parallel surfaces and, you know, working with the scan and figuring out what, what data you can and can't use mm -hmm. uh, from, from the scan. And so there's a certain point where human knowledge comes into this, where it's like the computer isn't going to do it all. It's not, you know, you need to look at it and try to figure out what was the design intent, where are the imperfections, and where do I, what do I need to tell the computer to 
fix those imperfections yeah. so I can design a part that was what the manufacturer intended to be. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's shrinkage on plastic parts, so you couldn't even scan a plastic part and reproduce it exactly because it, it'll it's probably, again. It, it's gonna shrink, <laughs> it's gonna keep shrinking or, yeah. you know, the warpage might be off and it's like, it's never gonna fit, you know, as the original part was drawn in CAD, mm -hmm. um, it was designed to do. So we've got this brand new model that says 2022 KTM Adventure R. Um, and what we're doing today is we're, we've got a few uh, parts in mind that we are going to design. So um, today, the first thing we're doing is we're gonna design um, a, a clear bra because this bike, it's, it's got very expensive painted plastic on the side. And I know a lot of people's knees are gonna be grinding dirt and debris right into that tank. And when they buy a brand new $22,000 model, they really don't wanna grind dirt into their paint. So we're gonna design a clear bra uh, right here that we can laser cut in house and send out to customers. And the way we're, we've chosen to do it uh, for, for this round is by 3D scanning it. So we've done things all the way, you know, where we put blue tape on the bike and we draw a Sharpie on the blue tape and we have it scan one to one and we turn that into a DXF file using a raster image. Um, because Craig's here with the scanner, we've actually chosen to scan it this time and pull the 2D DXF out of that scan. So Craig, you have some powder on here. Um, what, you, what is this powder called? Um, it, it's, uh, it's specifically designed for scanning and what it does is gives us a, a uniform finish between all the different uh, textures and finishes that are on the bike. Because you have uh, the gloss paint, the matte, semi-matte on, on the tank, and a different color plastic. You have uh, the painted frame, uh, the seat texture, all that kind of uh, plays havoc on on the scanner as far as it uh, reflecting and picking up that data. So we, mm -hmm. we put the spray on, it's a uniform finish and gives a nice finish that we could you know, pick up everything with it. I've even heard um, of people using foot powder, foot spray. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's quite a few things that were used before they came up with a mm -hmm. specific spray. And this spray is actually brand new that usually you would spray on and then when you're done, you gotta go back and clean it off. This actually, this, just this actually disappears uh, depending neat. on the temperature it, it, you know, a couple hours and it, you don't even have to touch it. Yeah, so the scanners sometimes really struggle with uh, shiny surfaces. So we, you know, he puts these reflective bits of tape on there and then we kind of dole it out a little bit and that helps uh, bring the scan in a little bit quicker. So back here, uh, for example, this is a, um, a, a good way to show kind of how we use the, the Creoform 3D scanners to design parts. So we're disassembling this bike right here to see exactly uh, how we can possibly make a tail tidy for this bike. So the previous models were difficult because the license plate bracket was the entire wheel well. So we would have, we would have had to have asked customers to, to literally cut a uh, hacksaw a part off and we didn't want to do that. So for this bike, we're lucky enough to where things bolt together. And so we're gonna basically, we've taken a scan of these pieces together. Then we're gonna remove uh, this license plate bracket here and take a scan of the remaining pieces and then we'll be able to create a point cloud and then a subsequent solid off of that so then we can design uh, our, our tail tidy for this model. So right here we have a great example of some past projects that we've worked with Craig on, um, most notably our fuel tank for the 790 and 890 Adventure. So this right here was a prototype that was CNC machined off a 40 foot long five axis CNC machine <laughs> that is about a million and a half dollar machine. Yeah, it's a convenient machine, but a little overkill for Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they were about the right. only people we could find to actually uh, make us a prototype for this. So basically we scanned the bike, we had the whole subframe scanned, all the different pieces separated, put together. We had the airbox in there, not the airbox in there. And we started working with Craig once we had the, the stock uh, or our Rottweiler intake system uh, designed. We purposely designed it so where we can actually design this fuel tank in the back of it because what happens is with our intakes, we end up inevitably almost on every model opening up a lot of empty space that was previously taken up by the stock airbox. So we like to try to utilize that space um, with handy things like toolboxes or bags or things like this. In this case, we wanted to do a fuel tank. So we started working with Craig and we started filling in the blanks and you can see how all these bits and pieces kind of fit through the tubes on the, on the uh, uh, subframe and, and things like this and you could do this on this bike because the subframes bolt together from the side and we once we had that solid we needed to figure out how to have it made so we used that million and a half dollar five axis <laughs> CNC machine 
that's actually designed for CNC machining large bucks for making boats yeah, in this large, particular company. Yeah, large plugs, carbon fiber. Plugs. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they make plugs to make, if you ever wonder where trophy truck bodies come from and how they make them, they're basically designed in 3D uh, space and maybe from a scan or maybe from scratch or maybe from uh, files both, that or, the, yeah. the factories uh, you know, will allow them to have. They make their modifications to fit the chassis and they will make the plugs, which is what you make the molds off of. And to make those plugs, they're giant foam pieces that they will see and see machine out on this machine. So when I was in there, I, there was a giant boat hole on okay. it that was made after this. This is a tiny little thing, but we made this so we could then take the part, get it in the bike, and check fit everything because you don't want to start spending a lot of money on molds unless you check fit it. So sometimes it's worth it. This is a $2,500 piece of foam right here. This is what it costs us to have this made because there's a lot of setup and programming to do this. And so we had this made, we got it in the bike, we verified that it worked, and then we ended up with this beautiful piece. And so this is our fuel tank that's attached to our carbon fiber intake. This goes in the back of the 790 and 890 Adventure, and most likely the 901, the Husky. Um, the Husky just came out as of the filming of this. So we have a bike right over there that we're gonna try to fit this in. So um, this is something, I mean, you can see all the little details and how complex this is, and this fits in that bike absolutely perfectly. Yeah. All right, everybody. Hey, that's it for this video. We hope this has been informative for you. We, we love it when you guys reach out to us with questions from designers, you know, budding engineers, you know, people who are really trying to get into this industry. And, uh, you know, we wanted to take a great opportunity, you know, while we had this bike, while we had Craig here and show you guys exactly how we do that. So, Craig, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, as always. And uh, for designing great stuff for us and uh, as always everybody if you can like and subscribe that helps us immensely if you guys have any questions about design and that kind of thing we're happy to answer them just put in the comments below um, you know your questions and we'll do our best to answer them so thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one